on this uh, episode of INI9 i have with me uh, mr uh, m raj gopalan who is uh, more famously known on twitter as chennai karan at chennai karan and he is uh, an expert in energy uh, he's been uh, involved in the energy sector sector for the last uh, 15 years especially in the distributed uh, power systems uh, technologies uh, so i thought we should uh, you know ask uh, raj about this uh, power sector or uh, rather the grids which tripped in the last uh, few days three dr- grids uh, collapsing and uh, when being restored in maybe 24 hours but what exactly happened raj you know what do you, what's your take on this matter uh nitin getting into first principles you know electricity as a commodity has a unique uh, feature hmm. uh electricity cannot be stored so it perishes instantaneously so this creates a host of issues uh <clears throat> the generation of electricity has to match the demand exactly every minute hmm. so a lot of discipline is required from all constituents of the power sector now how this is typically done is there is something called scheduling so if you take uh, the northern uh, grid each of the states schedules what is the kind of generation that will be possible the next day mm. and it is done on hour by hour basis sometimes even on a 15 minute by 15 minute uh, uh, basis likewise the the distribution company that draw the power they also need to schedule the kind of requirement they have right through the day so each each of the constituents commits that it will generate so much and it will it will draw so much so it requires a lot of uh, discipline there are mechanisms in place today there is something called a frequency linked uh ui exchange ui penalty system what it means is if the if the frequency goes down to something like 49.8 the normal frequency is about 50 hertz mm. if it goes to 49.8 and you draw more power than what you had scheduled or committed to draw you will pay a certain amount of penalty it could be 2 rupees a unit or so if the frequency goes down to 49.7 the rate is higher mm. if it goes to 49.5 it can be as high as 8 rupees or 9 rupees now what is happening is since most of these states are power starved they take the easy way out and even if the frequency dips below a certain critical level mm. they don't hesitate to overdraw mm. and that's exactly what's been happening in the northern uh, grid mm. so many of the states have been overdrawing much more than what they had scheduled uh, to draw mm. at least the problem that happened on the first day monday happened due to overdrawal by the states and the frequency had dropped to a precarious uh, level mm. <clears throat> so i think uh, <clears throat> i think that's that's the cru- uh, crux of the okay uh, but then what yeah. happened on the second day the three grids uh, tripped at the same time is it, is it because uh, one grid started uh, drawing power from the others yeah what's what's happening is um, uh the the concept of a grid itself is to enable sharing of power mm. see so yes, <clears throat> take a situation where you have um, every town connected to a power plant on a standalone uh, basis if the power plant fails the the city or town doesn't get power at all so a communal effort is done through this concept called grid where all the power plants are interconnected very similar to your internet which the younger generation will perhaps understand better so all these power plants right through the region are connected to form one grid and all the power plants feed into that uh, common grid and all the distribution companies and the consumers draw power from that single uh, single grid now a few years back we had regional grid you had the northern region eastern region you had the southern region and northeast and western region today it was found recently about 3 years back it was found expedient to connect all the grids so uh, the north northeastern western grids have been connected into one it's the it's called the ne w grid the intention is there to connect the southern grid also to the whole thing and make one composite national grid 
Mercifully, it has not happened yet for a variety of reasons. Some transmission bottlenecks still exist. So, the southern grid is still insulated from uh, whatever happened in the northern, uh, northern grid. But it's going to happen in 2014. Obviously, there are many advantages of having a common uh, grid. Uh, <clears throat> see, if, if you have a load and one of the power plants goes out of the grid for whatever reason, technical, maintenance, the other power plants can chip in. So, the load on the grid is shared evenly by all the power plants and by all the consumers. So, that's the advantage of uh, having the, the grid very similar to the internet in the yeah. case of uh, okay. computers. But what, is the, what, what you know, in our current situation, the whole issue seems to be lack of power generators, right? You just don't have enough electricity being generated. So, the grid, uh, the, the overdrawing from the grid is a, a direct consequence of not having enough power supply uh, in the first place, right? Yeah, the grid, uh, the grid failure can happen due to two reasons. One is obviously there is not enough enough uh, power. The demand is much more than the the supply at any point of time, which is which is very true in the case of the northern uh, grid, or for that matter, most parts of uh, India. The other reason could be that the supply suddenly drops. It could be due to some weather conditions, fog. For for instance, two thousand and one. Foggy conditions in north disrupted power supply. Rains can play havoc, as it happened uh, in the U.S. Uh, recently. Mm. So, if suddenly one plant or one transmission corridor goes out of action, mm. it cannot feed the uh, demand. Mm. Now, the electrical settings, they are all there with a certain protection uh, system. Mm. What it means is when the frequency goes below 49 or 49.5 or 49.4, the grid is under strain, your generator stations are under strain, it could cause havoc to the whole system, it could damage the system. Mm. So, there are under frequency relays as well as over frequency relays built into the system to protect the system. The protection happens only through tripping the system mm. and when tripping happens you have a blackout, that is inevitable, right. that is there to protect the system, very similar to the fuses in your house. Right. Yeah. No, but then, uh, you know, I'm trying to get down to this, uh, uh, both the policy implication as well as the political implication of this. I think let, let's let's leave the political implication for, because uh, you, you can uh, keep blaming uh, uh, yeah. the ruling party, uh, which, which in this case would be probably all right to do because uh, you have uh, eight years and very little additional capacity being put onto the grid. Mm -hmm. But what about the policy, you, you know, in the sense that, uh, is this pricing mechanism of uh, 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 paying, uh, charging a fine for overdrawing, is it something which is workable or do we need something else to uh, prevent such drastic uh, uh, trippings from happening in the future? No, by and large it has worked, uh, Nathan. In fairness to the system, in the last five or six years that uh, the after the Electricity Act and then the grid discipline was uh, brought in and then this concept of unscheduled uh, interchange, UI mechanism, by and large it has, uh, it has worked. But then the problem is so acute because the, the gap between demand and supply is so huge now mm. that this mechanism is getting to be uh, inadequate. At the same time, we cannot ignore the, the political side of the, the problem. Unlike, uh, let's say, the telecom sector, which is entirely part of the central, uh, it, it's a central subject. Mm. Electricity is on the concurrent list. Right. It's a predominantly a state subject, which means that individual states have to take care of uh, their needs. It's controlled by respective state governments. The, 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 the controlling body, the local state load dispatch uh, center. Mm. So, they all have to come together to form this uh, uh, grid. So, even the passage of the Electricity Act meant that several states had to be brought on board individually. So, it wasn't a central directive which was which was imposed on all the, the states. So, there is a political issue there and to implement anything on the electricity sector takes to that extent much more uh, time because you've got to get everybody on uh, board. So, you can't ignore that uh, dimension either, political dimension. Yeah, but you know, let's, let's uh, play this out into the future. If the ability, if our, uh, if we put, uh, if we don't put so much additional generating capacity online over over a period of time, but demand continues to grow, and this business of overdrawing from the grid 
continues to take place then we should expect more of these uh, major catastrophic uh, grid failures right yeah obviously i mean the the long term answer is you simply have to have more generation capacity from a variety of sources you cannot simply say that we cannot have nuclear power or coal power you know you you need a variety of uh, sources and you need them fast the problem is even if you start today to set up a coal plant i mean from the conception stage to the commissioning stage takes at least about 7 to 8 years today that's been the average a nuclear plant takes close to 10 years yeah. so your base load need by base load i mean plants that are capable of supplying power on a 24 by 7 into 365 days uh, basis i'm not talking about the solar and the wind which are seasonal or which are in farm so only there are three options or four options for you you have coal you have nuclear you have large hydro which depend on perennial rivers not the small ones which which are run of the river types large hydro the type that you see in the us or china mm. and finally gas mm. now out of these four you can rule out large hydro we don't have too many of these perennial uh, supplies right so you have limited storage of uh, water mm. so large hydro is not an option for you mm. similarly gas you simply don't have enough gas supply and we are struggling to feed even existing plants mm. and even if you start today it's going to take many years to set up these lng terminals mm. so you you have only two options you have coal you have nuclear nuclear is going to take 8 or 10 years right to to set up mm. if you can overcome all the political uh, problem mm. which means that we have largely dependent on dependent on uh, coal based uh, plants mm. and 60 to 70 percent of our generation continues to be from coal plants and in the next plan 12th and 13th uh, plan we will continue our dependence on coal based uh, plants so in the short term by short i mean 2 to 3 years i don't have any easy answers for the next few weeks or months in the short term 2 to 3 years the only hope that i see is we move heaven and earth to bring gas into the country you can still if you if you put your mind to it set up lng terminals within 3 years if you can get out of all the environmental issues you can set set them up in 3 years you can lay gas lines in 2 to 3 years gas turbine and gas engine plants can be set up in 3 years and there is hope that you can set up another 30 to 40000 megawatt within 3 years if you start working on it right now the low hanging fruits are yes you must cut down inefficiencies in transmission and distribution right now close to about 30 35% of the power is simply lost in the system for whatever reason theft unaccounted technical whatever it is so that needs to be brought down and it's been brought down i mean in fairness to the system they have cut down the losses so work much more work has to be done there availability of coal you know many of the coal plants are languishing for want of uh, coal now that's something that must be taken uh, care you know and finally the political will must be there power is a subject which transcends across uh, all the all the ministries you know you talk of uh, coal is handled by a different ministry finance is comes under a different ministry industry comes under a different ministry nuclear is different petroleum and uh, oil is different so it's entirely up you need a very very strong uh, prime minister not 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 you need a prime minister who who is on top of the whole thing you know he has to bring all these ministries on board and and move things quite uh, fast i would say it's not happened in the last uh, few years which may be the reason why the power sector is in dire straits today thanks thanks uh, raj it was a wonderful conversation Thank you thank you again for this uh, thank you. thing thank you. and uh, we Thanks hope uh, hope you'll be able to join us again in future uh, iterations of INI9 will be a pleasure Nathan. thank you